Good Tech Tuesday to you, it's Mark Ladwig here, and we've got a more aggressive fix today, so buckle up, we're gonna have some fun. A friend of mine sent me there, uh, named Terry, sent me her cling biles, and she had noticed that as she was wearing them, she can take this off here, as she was wearing them, the tongue was really starting to slide over, and it was just getting aggressive. Um, one of the features, like, in the company I work for, Jackson, you'll see a lot of our Elite Skates have these hooks on there to prevent that as you're using a high-end use. You don't get that twist of the tongue. You don't want that happening. Um, this skater had done a fix, and I think, I don't know if I posted this before. See the slits here? They had done a really good job of putting in some of the slits of their own and tying it behind, but unfortunately, it just still slid a little bit. So they contacted me and said, hey, can you add hooks? And of course I can. So when they've got their foot in there, they'll be able to go like this. See? Be able to hold it in place. And then the other side, you'll be able to come across. So you got them all jazzercised in there, and that way, I hold it like that. There's no movement of the tongue back and forth. <clears throat> so I did this one already. So I figured, let's do the other one. So I already got my two marks in there already parallel, and you can see there's a lot of twist in the tongue. See that? See how aggressive that gets? It's just crazy. So I made my two marks, and I've got it in line as I pull up the tongue. One of the things is gonna do prep and check. See how some of the tongue is starting to delaminate from the foam, and I've got this old glue in here. So first things first, I gotta take all that off. <clears throat> I don't know, you guys will see me pushing stuff into this. I have a hole right here so I can put all my trash in. Um, old glues like this, they get activated by heat. So I'm gonna use my heat gun. You gotta be careful because just a little bit of heat goes a long way. It's just warming up. As it's just warming it up, it'll just get it warm and it'll peel off. See how nicely it's coming off just using my fingers. Just rolling it back. And if you're gonna be gluing, like I plan to, once I do all the cutting and the backing and everything, I gotta put a piece over there. I don't wanna leave an exposed piece in there. And so when I reattach it all, I don't want that glue in there. I want to get rid of that. So some of the things we're going to be using today is contact cement. This is DAP. I like this one because it has a little brush inside. And then I've got five minute epoxy. And I'll show you about that in the hooks in a minute. Um, be careful. A lot of them, when you pick them up, this is a long lasting one. You want to look at the back. You see how it's got handling time, working time, and the set time. Um, all set times basically 24 hours. Um, give never never put something you fixed on the ice right away. You got to give it time to heal So I'm almost done see it was pretty quick I'm gonna give it a little bit more heat for that last little bit rather than I don't want the foam to pull away I just want the glue to, to, to warm up and think it's getting reset There we go just rubbing the finger back and forth little friction on it and that's good so I don't know about you guys but I got a lot of extra time on my hands so I appreciate getting stuff like this in and, and uh, being able to help people get when we get back to the ice to uh, you know to get flying again I, uh, <laughs> I found a new love for rollerblading the other day I don't know about you guys but uh, getting back out there I mean, it's not so much jumping, it's more like just feeling that uh, glide of the, the outside edge, which is my favorite part of ice skating. All right. So you see, got almost all the glue off. Now I'm going to look on the other side, and uh, I'm going to put my finger on it. And I'm going to estimate about where it is. Actually, I can even use the screen there. About right there. And the reason I'm doing that inside mark to match the outside mark is this is the scary part for 90% of people. I'm going to use my, my knife now, and I'm going to cut a block. Actually, this, check your knives. If you're doing cutting stuff, I got paint on here from, <laughs> obviously, home project. So I'm going to get rid of that, put on a new, um, new blade because it'll cut a lot better. I didn't actually cut all the way to the bottom, you can see, and I should have been able to do that in one slice. That's how I know my knife is uh, nice and sharp. I like a sharp knife so I know exactly what I get. There we go. So 
so I can use it with precision. All right. Always be careful with these. I, I find myself leaving them open all the time, but I gotta remember to put them down. So I'm just lightly gonna cut. Oh, see, that's much better. See that? Just split right open. And I'm going down and I'm using it as a sense of feel. See, I can see the little bit of foam in there. There's a little bit of black foam backing that. I'm just cutting a little piece right there. See, and I can be like a surgeon. You just touch the foam part, because that's all I want. I don't want to hit the leather or the tongue. So I'm just getting the edge in there. See that? Open it up. Because I need to get this foam wedge out there, because they want that feeling to be the same, which I 100% agree with. So I'm basically just cutting out the the block here. Right. And then I just use my fingers and pry it off. Uh, see that? Peels right out. That's a scary thing for most skaters because that's your tongue. <laughs> You're like, ah! So now, actually, I've got a hole puncher. I can put it, this is great around the house. I'd love it with my kids. I can put add belt loops in and everything. So I'm gonna go on the inside of the seam to give it a little bit of support. That's what I did on the other one. And I got it right there. So now this one has a little bit of a jagged tooth from doing so many, so I gotta kinda do it a second time. There we go. So see that? Got a one hole. Let's go do the other side. I love that little snap feeling. Do it a second time, make sure I got it. And there are my two holes. See how I did on the, the loops? Too bad. Got them pretty much right in the center by estimating it. See that? Very good. So my hole puncher over here. Now, I did one already, but see the hooks? Um, you could see they were goldish colored. I only had black short barrel hooks, and when I say short barrel, see how short the barrel is? Because I'm going to be behind the tongue, so I don't want to have a lot of extra spread. Now, see that one? It's not much, but oh my gosh. Look at that. It'll spread more and it'll be more metal and I don't want that. So what I've been doing is I, I just buffed off the black parts and usually when you tie for skates you shouldn't notice it. So it's not perfect, but in these days of coronavirus we're all gonna make do. See, I forgot left that open again. All right, so how I made it silvery on top is I got a little emery cloth. You know, it's very light. You can use like a 150 paper. I find it leaves a lot of um, harsh marks on it. So I'm just gonna, see it's starting to get started there. Basically take the enamel coat of paint off. And I'm just doing it enough to get the paint off. Very good. See? Now I got two shiny ones and they're short barrels. And you can see, I'm just gonna double check, make sure I got it right. It's gonna fit in there. Let's see, a little bit. See how it's just enough? And if I put the long barrel hook in there, which is the right color, but see how that's just too long? It's just gonna be extra stuff. Now, when you make an eyelet, usually you take the two different, um, you take a barrel and you take um, one of these pieces and you push them together. And I usually do that when I, when I repair in here. But um, today, what I'm gonna use is actually, uh, <clears throat> it's actually these little straps from Jackson. We use these to, to put in. So I'm gonna cut one in to size. Just rough estimate, it doesn't need to be perfect for this. Just cause it's gonna be an extra backing in there and it'll also provide some uh, support <clears throat> to the, to the, hooks. Now I will, I'm going to use, this will be my first time to today in the video to use contact cement. 
I'm just checking to make sure it's in it's in shape. See, it looks perfect. It's covering up my hold again. So I'm just going to use a little contact cement. So when you do this, and this is a newer bottle, so I'm, I don't need a ton. So my, this is my scratch piece. I don't like getting glue all over over everything, so just a little bit over top the piece. And this is a water-based thing, so you can usually, if you get some on your fingers, you can take it off with a little bit of hot water and rubbing. Now I'm going to put it on the inside of the black right here on this foam. Let it sit for a second. And while I'm doing this, I'm going to start to fix the edges, actually, since we're in here with the glue. Get both sides of it pretty liberally. Now, because I live in a hot environment, this is a wonderful place to be, but I can uh, accelerate the curing. This does smell, so I've got the garage door open. So make sure you do this heat moldability or this uh, contact cement in an aerated place. You don't, you can get pretty, uh, pretty excited with that. So we're just using a little heat on this just to warm it up, get it setting, drying out. Because once we pinch this together, it's going to give us a nice permanent bond, which is nice. center nice and flat now I'm using that backing just because I expect them to crank down on these uh, lace holes so I want them to be able to have some confidence that if they do it, it shouldn't pluck right out I'm going to pinch off the sides of the tongue so I can get in there with my boot press again or my hole prick punch A little, a little, uh, little piece didn't want to come up. There you go. All right, that's that. Set. So now I got my backing in there, holes punched. All right, don't lose this. This is that little foam piece. We're gonna put it back in later, okay? Um, all right, so we got these all dressed up. So now it's time to go over to my riveter. And you guys probably saw this here in the back the whole day. Uh, wondering what the <coughs> is that big red thing. With our rink closed, I was able to borrow it. Usually I do these kind of repairs over there. I need a couple of tools today. <clears throat> big one for me on this kind of fix is I have a broken hockey blade because these things are amazing. They fit perfectly inside a hockey hook. So I can squish it because I don't have um, I don't have a really good hook attachment so this is my uh, homegrown way to smash down on top of this. So one thing I'm going to need to do is when I push it through I use an open-ended one and then when I push down on it oh, somebody. See that concave top bottom or top so when I push on it I've got that backing it up so it fits perfectly as long as it won't collapse having and sometimes I even use this you can see it's got all sides of it, it fits right in there prevents it from falling down okay so I am gonna get it set and one thing we didn't talk about is which way the hooks are gonna set <clears throat> All right. 
I'm gonna have to make another hook here. Once it fell on the ground. Which I love that when you lose a part. I had it all set. Hmm. Oh, <laughs> got it in the skate. <laughs> I was holding this one and looking for this one. It's funny. All right, so like I was saying, so turn it sideways. Um, you can see hooks have the two different ways. They could face in and face out. Since it's going to be pulling, I'm going to do it towards the outside. See that? I could do it the other way, but that would be for a cross. I mean, the skater would have to know they want that. This is the most natural way to do it. So we're going to do it like this with it facing to the outside. Okay, and we'll do it on both sides. So again, I'm gonna put this on the inside to give it that support as I clamp down on it. And like we were talking, why I need a backing is I need, actually I need to use a gold one. Um, you need these kind of washing backers and they fit through there so that when the fingers, cause I'm split riveting. So when the fingers come through, you got something more than just leather to hold on to. Metal's a little stronger, of course, than the natural leather. So in the back, it'll look like, it'll start looking like that. Okay, so I got my split riveter on the bottom. Got my hook facing out. I always found when I'm teaching, I'm talking, I gotta do double, double checks. So this is a touch and feel kind of thing. Usually, it takes a while to get used to this kind of thing. Once you get used to it, it's really good. But you always want to double check. The barrel is going to sit down in the point. It actually looks kind of, it's an exaggeration, but there's a point like that. And it takes a while, but you get used to feeling the point of the barrel sitting in. And then you can do the, the split. It's kind of a feel thing because you can't really see it where it's at. Um, just be really careful about where you set in your direction. And then it's just a light pressure. A little bit of elbow grease. And then this hockey one falls out. I did a pretty good split rivet. See it's all meshed up. Nice. Very flush and level. Looks nice. And that backing is going to help make it very secure and lasting. I right, got my other one, didn't lose it this time. Um, got my hook facing out. See that, right there. Put in my hockey. Good, I got my gold washer. I like using the gold ones. They just, you know, you get used to a material. The silver ones work, but uh, I don't know, it's just like a different alloy. Feel myself in the center. I like to use the weight of the machine to make sure I got everything situated. It should feel nice and secure and snug. All right. There we go. Put dirt on that. I'll usually do a little cleanup. So now we have the two right there. There you go. That's better. The two of them going all right nice and then on the back you can see you got the hole out and now here's how we're going to fix this a little bit more uh, i got my spare screw i got my five minute epoxy and the reason is is the washers are there and i've and i've done a split rivet so i've come through with the barrel i've split rivet it now a lot of times what happens with hooks is that the, the fingers start to fail and then it slips through it's not that the washer actually broke it's that the fingers get pulled and pulled and pulled and it's like um if you reach through a hole grabbed an apple but imagine then you drop the apple then it would fall through like it's just is some strength so what i'm going to do right now is to keep those fingers from falling in and slipping through i'm going to actually um use my five minute epoxy and just in a little dab so i go this should be more than enough. That's more than enough. And so now I'm just gonna swirl the heck out of these. I like using uh, <laughs> wood screws because they have the serrated edges and they really seem to mix up the stuff really well. 
I noticed that it uh, it is exactly five minutes. So if you have a timer, you can start timing me. This will be over in uh, less than five minutes. You can tell the color. I'm using the clear. You can use different colors. That other one I showed you was a cream. But now, see, with the wood screw, I can get a bunch of dollop on it. Now I'm going to put it right down in the center of where I just put those fingers. See that? And I want to make sure I don't have any air bubbles in them. I find that, that this really helps make the fix last. I had a kid that was a pair skater. Um, wasn't a Jackson, but it was a Rydell. And it's just, you know, strong skater. She's an elite. And it, this stuff happens. It happens in every brand. Um, the hook came out. You know, and I've heard people say, oh, these, these ones don't do that. I have seen every brand lose a hook, and I have fixed every brand's hook. Um, actually, I think I have it. I'll have to do a video on hooks. All right, so there, got it right in the center. I like to put the screw on, you can tell, and that way I can check and see if it's done, because I can grab the screw on that. Like this one's obviously just getting sticky, so I'll leave that in there. Um, hold that tongue out like that. Hold it still. There we go. Done with that. I'm going to need this some more. Put this over here so I can test it later. All right. In that center, we were going to do a round. And I actually cut the other piece so I know exactly about how big it is. So I'll just go like that. So I know I need another little piece later. So I'm gonna draw. This is a pour-on. It's gonna be a little bit. It'll be a little bit different, but very similar to what she had before. So I like to rough out the pattern first. So I'm just going to get a square out, basically about as big as I need. And even though that's drying, I can kind of get a sense. Yep, that's about right. And so I like to use an angled cut when I'm cutting my pour on, and this allows me to uh, give it that nice edge, just like what she had before. I really hope she's going to like this. I think, I think we're doing a good job. Trim here, even cuts. So you can see, I've got it at a tipped angle. So I'm gonna do a little prep on these two pieces here now. Let's put this over here. Nice to pour on, that's just junk. I'm not really good at tidying up my space, but because you're here, I'm going to. <laughs> and this is enough, I'll save that one for later. A bag of those. I, I can't help myself. I do. I do keep like a bucket of spare miscellaneous. And if it gets bigger than that, I go through. I was like, ah, oh, I'll never use it. I was throwing out. Um, I had old shoes the other day. Actually, I found one of these the other day. Uh, somebody else's cling bile, not this one, but another cling bile that uh, you know, it's, it's just fun. You never know. I could use it on some kind of craft project. Um, or let night glue. I'm gonna brag. I did start sewing because we got masks to make for the world, right? Starting my mask making, because it's handy. But I decided to make a, a little apron. So, I sewed one up the other day, a little hodgepodge. All right, back to work. I'm gonna use my crafty thing again. This, this side's dry glue that's over here. All right, we're gonna, actually, this is one very important thing, is scoring, scoring your pour on. If you don't cut it all the way through, you just wanna make these little cuts in it, you see that? Kind of like bacon bread and the reason is is then the glue gets down in it and holds it in and i notice it's not you know it's probably just expedient sometimes sometimes i'll even use that that 150 paper we talked about just rough up the edges 
because that's definitely roughed up. I mean, it's older, it's been beat up a little bit, and I want to make this a little beat up, a little roughy, because this glue is going to set better if it's on something a little roughed up. can use a lot more on this one. And again, make sure you're doing this in an aerated space. I usually have my fan on for this so I don't get a face full of it while I'm doing it. Here's my piece that's going to go in the center. I gotta, That's going to go back in. I'll be honest, because of the material that's in the back, I'm actually going to cut out the little black piece there. Because I've got material back there now, so I don't want to make it elevated and stick up funny. I'm just cutting off the black piece, the little foam that attached to the foam. Trying to be as delicate as possible, just cutting it out as I go along. Maybe I have my music going. And I mean, with these strange times there, I'm sure everybody's finding crafty holidays. And I've got to say, I do appreciate you guys coming by and watching me work. I, uh, this has been a labor of love. I've always loved doing stuff with my hands. I mean, this is gonna be the this is the top side, so this is gonna stay perfect. It's just getting rid of some of that stuff. So while I'm doing this, just for fun, I'm kind of waiting for that glue to dry, and that's kind of why I'm doing what I'm doing. Taking my time. There we go. And so now it's a little seated less. Also, it's already roughed up. I can score it a little bit, like I said. Get the glue in there. All right, put that down. Get mark. Right. So these pieces are prepped. Well, that's the nice thing about contact cement. You can get it um, glued and then come back to it in a little bit. All right, let's check. See, we have the two of them. See how this one is basically... See how it's stuck pretty much... I mean, it's, it's not sticking to my finger now. It's hard like the other one. So we're basically there. I'm going to set these over here for a second so I get some space on it. But that's what I love about a five-minute epoxy. You can really, yeah, just to the touch, it's not coming up at me. It's not sticking. So now I can basically, I'm just going to check to make sure I got everything level in there. That's all the same. All right. Put my contact cement in. Actually, before I do that. I put the contacts in. I know this is still drying. I just want to see how it fits. See? That's pretty good. See how it's pretty level? And then when I put that last little piece over and I glue it in, it's going to fit great. All right. All right. Um, just realized I have to do the sides of that too. Forgot to do the sides. So I'm putting my contact cement in the center, doing the edges, which I forgot to do on the little piece. all the challenges on Facebook right now with all the quarantine stuff. I think the color one and the picture, my seventh picture, those were kind of fun. Oh, sticky. Uh, like I said, if you get um, a little bit of contact cement on you, it ain't going to be no thing. You'll be able to get it off. Ah, just a little bit of water. I can't ever get this little piece off. Ah, just really loves me. I got it on my fingers, obviously. I'll rub it off a little bit. All right. So I'm gonna. I haven't glued this side yet because I'm basically just gonna. It's actually a little too big. I'm gonna turn this down even a little more actually. Even though I glued it, I can still do that because it's drying on that side. I'm gonna glue a little on this side too, just a little wide, keeping that angle. Terry's gonna love these. See, that's a little skinnier. I think that looks right. What do you think? Does that look better? I think it looks right for it. Alright, so basically, now I'm gonna use my contact.
contact cement on this section. I'm trying to keep inside the lines. All right, where the old stuff was. You can see the pattern there. Any extra, I can always rub it off just a little bit. So I don't have to, I mean, I'm not, I don't go to detention or something if I don't have exactly the right, I don't have the right exact one. Actually, you can tell they're sticky, but they're getting a little dry. So first things first, do the little cube. <laughs> it's stuck to my finger. All right, so I'm going to activate the middle. Squish it down right in the center there, like I said. And I'm going to touch the sides, one side, two sides. And that's not sticky in the middle. I'm trying to line it up so that it meets pretty darn square. Now, what I'm doing is because it's contact cement, I'm squishing the tongue so that it hits and touches in just the right spot. Touch up that little bit on the top there. It'll be 30 minutes. Yeah, that takes time to do these things. I just realized it's about 30 minutes to do this. It's spreading a little bit, but I uh, I know when I put it in its shape. I'm gonna, it'll stay that way. Heating this up. Clean that up. Again, make sure you're aerating and ventilating. Probably getting a little loopy. I don't have my fan on. All right, so now this piece is activated. And I'm gonna put it down in the middle. Putting it in the position of the skate, the way the skater wants it. Slick. It just rehabbed his tongue. What do you think of that? Now, of course, it doesn't show all the prep time, and I did the other foot, so that's, you know, a solid hour to do one skate. So, good times, good times. Um, I'm going to press it down because it is contact cement. You can see the edges are already dried, they're not falling apart anymore, which is good. So, I'm going to put this one inside the skate and give it the 24 hours to dry and cool and we should have a, a rehab skate. So thanks to Terry for sending this over to me. It was a lot of fun and uh, she'll come back to me soon. So. All right guys, stay safe, wash your hands and uh, thanks for talking tech with Mark.